Okay, so week six, problem 5.43, in which we have a turbine. So we have steam, which flows steadily through an adiabatic turbine. So there's no heat going into or out of this turbine. The inlet conditions are 500C, 4 megapascals, and velocity of 80 meters per second. And then the leaving conditions are 30 kilopascals. 92% quality, so 93% of what leaves is vapor, 8% is liquid, and velocity of 50 meters per second. The mass flow rate of the steam is 12 kilograms per second, so that's quite a lot of steam. Determine A, the change in kinetic energy, B, the power output, and C, the turbine inlet area. Okay, so the we're having, note that we're going from a higher state of energy to a slower state of energy, right? So Pretty much we're starting up here, let's do it. We're starting up here, this is state one, and then we're going to a lower state of energy, state two, okay? Note that our velocity decreases, our pressure decreases, so when we go from lower state of energy, we know that because we have a difference in delta U here, right? In this case, delta H is more appropriate because we have also uh, pressure and volume changing. But when we have this decrease in energy, we know that this has to leave either in the form of heat or, or work. Right? There's no work, so therefore all this energy is transformed into the work that the turbine can do. So that's useful work the turbine can do. All right, so let's start. First part is quite simple because it wants the change in kinetic energy, and therefore all it wants is the change in, let's do it like this straight off, V2 squared minus V1 squared, right? So final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. Okay, we have every all the data that we may need to do this. Okay, notes that because we don't have a mass, we only have a mass flow rate, we could grab the change in energy rate, but that's all we're, we're asked for, change, ask the uh, change in kinetic energy. So the best I can do is send this mass dividing over there. So this equation, let's, it's not equal, let's just do this. This equation I can transform into change in kinetic energy divided by mass, which is to say kilojoules per kilogram now, instead of just what we had before, is going to be V2 squared minus V1 squared. If these guys are in meters per second, then my answer is going to be in joules. Right, so we have everything we need. It's going to be 80 squared minus 50 squared divided by 2, which renders, uh, oops, sorry, Actually, we phrase that because our end velocity is 50, so I just inverted them. Yeah. I can't use this thing. Okay, sorry. So my end velocity V2 is 50, I just flipped them. So 50 minus 80. And it's going to be a negative, right? Because we're decreasing energy. That makes sense. So negative 1950. And that's going to be in joules per kilogram. And since we eliminated the kilogram over here, so it's dividing, and joules because these guys, as we talked about in previous videos, will render joules. Okay, next, let's switch colors, B. So B is asking us the power of the outputs. All right, so as we just spoke here, if we can find the change in enthalpy, why enthalpy? Because enthalpy combines, don't forget, the enthalpy combines the change in internal energy and the change and the pressure and volume that is occurring in this moving fluid here. If we can find this change of energy here, we can use that information to combine to find the um, turbine, and also there's a change in kinetic energy, this guy here, which is also going to be contributing to the work of the turbine. Okay, so there's two ways we can look at this. We can look at the change in energy has to be zero, right? The energy has to be conserved, therefore, all this energy, this negative energy, we can just lose this. This has to be converted into some form of energy. So we can think about saying that. Let's put it this way. The change in energy is going to be the H1 plus kinetic energy 1 on the initial state. And then the second state, we're going to have our H2 plus our kinetic energy 2 and the work of the turbine. Okay, that's one way to look at this problem. So if we want to find the work in the turbine, all we need to do is 
grab h1 minus h2 and also let's, let's put it in and also grab kinetic energy 1 minus kinetic energy 2 okay we already have this we just calculated it we just need to find this just don't forget that to be able to sum these two guys they need to be in the same unit right or else we're making a big mistake okay so what we need to do now is find the two enthalpies enthalpy 1 and enthalpy 2 okay so if we go to the table and we look at 4 megapascals which is our initial state you'll see that T set is 250 okay so if my saturation temperature is 250 and my actual temperature is 500 that means uh, let's put it this way because this is smaller than T1 therefore it's superheated okay so we go to the superheated table instead of the mixed table and on the second one we already know it's a mixture because it gives us the quality right so we know it's 92 percent vapor and eight percent liquid so we know we're going to be looking at the mixture table okay so my h1 straight from this table here straight from this table from the super heated table i'll grab my h1 which is at four megapascals in 500 uh, sorry, in 500 Celsius, yeah, and that's going to be table A6, so that's going to give me 34, 46 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so this, again, this is table A6, page 910. Cool, and then the other thing we're missing is now H2. Let's do a little bar here to find H2. We know it's a saturated mixture, so it's going to be the quality times whatever the saturated vapor energy is. And, oops, 1 minus the quality and whatever the saturated liquid is. And both I can grab on the table. Okay, so I'm going to be looking to find these guys. I'm going to be looking at table, this is going to fit table A5. And this is going to be H2 equals my 92% times 26.24.6 plus 1, oops, 1 minus 0 0.92 92 times, what is the uh, liquid one? 289.27. Okay, so my H2, doing this math, is going to be approximately 2,437.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so now we just got the two things that were missing for us to be able to solve this equation. All right, I'm actually going to write on this page so we don't have to get a new page specifically for this. So check it out. We'll continue on this line here, okay? So this is going this means that this value, kinetic energy one minus kinetic energy two, is positive a thousand nine hundred and fifty, right? Don't forget that we did kinetic energy two minus one, so that's why we got negative. If I do one minus two, that's gonna be a positive, right? So I'm just inverting these two values here. Okay, so we have that already in joules, and then this guy here is gonna be just the difference between the two. Okay? This is joules per kilogram, this is kilojoules per kilogram. So we need to transform this guy into joules, or this guy into kilojoules, whatever you guys find that makes more sense, okay? Because this, these values are big, I'm actually just going to put this guy into kilojoules, it's going to make more sense for us at this moment, okay? So that's going to be, let's see, 3446 minus 2437.8 plus... Divide by 1,000, 1 to 3, that's 1.95, okay? So that is 1,000, this whole thing is 1,010.15, and that's kilojoules per kilogram. So same units as the enthalpies we just found, okay? So this is our answer for B. That's 
how much energy the turbine has in the form of work and that can be used all right and we have that energy due to the change in kinetic energy and the change in the state properties okay so i'm going to pause and change pages for us to do part c right last part of this question asks us to determine the turbine inlet area okay so we don't really know the shape i'm drawing this as a circle but we don't know the shape it could be anything here it could be a square or anything so we don't know this shape here it doesn't really matter because we're not not to calculate the radius the diameter or if it's the square the length of it, anything like that we're not looking for this we're looking for just the area okay so looking for a unit that's meters squared in SI okay what do we know if you guys recall we did that before the volume flow rate all right that is how the volume changes with time can be found if we get the this area whatever shape this area is let's say, say it's like this okay, if we take this cross-sectional area and multiply by the velocity of air that's going through there okay of steam in our case so we can get the velocity and multiply by the cross-sectional area okay in this case because we want it on the inlet right we're being asked what's the area on the inlet we're going to use v1 right that's the velocity at the inlet so in other words if we want the area we just solve for the area so if we want the cross-sectional area all we need to do is grab the volume flow rate divide that by velocity one velocity one we have just need to find a volume flow rate and we've done that in the past it's quite easy right because we know that by definition specific volume is just the volume divided by the mass just look at the units therefore mass specific volume equals volume take the derivative on both sides Just do volume here so you don't get confused to velocity. This guy does not change with time, so it leaves the derivative. And we left that the mass flow rate times specific volume equals the volume flow rate. And then if we can find the volume flow rate, we can plug that guy in there and then divide it by the velocity and get the area, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so what do I need? Mass flow rate that I have, that's 12 kilograms per second. Specific volume of the inlet, well, that's easy. We just have to look again at the table and we need to grab the value for the superheated table where the pressure is 4 megapascals and the temperature is 500 C. On the superheated table, I'll go over there and I grab my specific volume 1, which is 0 0.086. Four, four meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, so we can put this guy here. This is going to be mass flow rate times specific volume one divided by velocity one, which is twelve times zero point zero eight six four four divided by that's my initial velocity 80. 80. okay that's going to be 0 0.012966 which is let's do it in the bottom here which is approximately 0 0.013 and now let's have a look at the units quickly. Just make sure we know what we're doing. It's kilograms per second. Volume, a specific volume, meter cubed per kilogram. And then the bottom, meters per second. Second, because second. Kilogram, because kilogram. Meters cubed is a meter. We're left with meter squared. Okay, so this is confidently say it's meter square and that's our third answer right there all right as per usual email me if you have questions we'll talk soon